Hi, it's Ginchy here from the PRS Tech Center, and I'm going to be taking you through the Silver Sky today. We will be going over some setup elements, showing you how this setup differs from the core setup, and I will also be showing you how to turn this into a floating trim as it arrives with a blocked trim. This guitar ships with the bridge flush against the body. In the design and testing of this guitar, both John Mayer and Paul Smith found that they liked the tone and sustain that that brought. So we have a steel flat plate bridge, bent steel saddles, but it is based off the Gen 3 screws and knife edge. So you will get all the great tuning stability and feel of the PRS trim with a very traditional package. Here I have laid out all the tools that we will need to move the Silver Sky from a flush mount bridge to a floating style bridge. First off, I have the Allen key that's included with your guitar to adjust the saddle height. I have the truss rod wrench also included with your guitar, which we'll use if we need to adjust the truss rod. I have a piece of cardstock. I have a machinist rule with 30 seconds clearly marked out. I have a number two Phillips head screwdriver. I have a number one Phillips head screwdriver. I have a pair of string cutters. I have a pack of PRS 10 to 46 strings, which is what your John Mayer comes equipped with. And I have the shims that we will be using. The first thing we're going to do is place the cardstock under the trim to protect the finish on the top. So just trim down, slide it underneath, and release. The next thing we're going to do is loosen the strings and remove them. You just want to give it a few turns, make sure there's plenty of slack in the string. Loosen the thumb screws and we can remove these strings. I like to leave the holes for these strings lined up down the fretboard. It'll just make it easier when we go to restring it. Take your string clippers cut the ends off and remove the strings. Our next step will be to remove the neck plate and the neck of the Silver Sky. So take your number two Phillips and carefully insert it and remove the screws. Make sure that your neck is supported and not hanging off the side of your table or it could fall out when you remove the last screw. And remove the neck plate, hold the neck, and lift up on the body. Our next step is to install the shims. We do that to raise the action at the bridge so that we can bring the bridge up and ensure that you have plenty of room to up trim once we have it floating. We'd like to raise it to 30 seconds. Each shim placed at the end of the neck like so will raise the bridge angle approximately 1 30 seconds. So we want to put two in, and then once we put the neck back on, the screw will go through the back plate, through the body, and through this hole, holding it in place. To install these, I will take both shims, lay them where they should go in the neck pocket, and place the neck on top of them. While holding the neck in place, I will turn the guitar over, lay it face down, place the back plate, back in place and start each screw by hand. The pressure of the neck when you're holding it in place will make sure that the shims stay where they should be. And these screws, as they go down, will go through the holes in the shim and ensure that they stay in place. Next, we want to tighten these down. So grab your number two Phillips and carefully tighten them down. You don't want to over tighten. So start out getting them snug in an X pattern, one corner, then the opposite corner, and then the other two corners. Once you have them snug, we will go back and get them tight, give them about an eighth of a turn, just to make sure that they're firmly planted in the neck, but not too tight. The next thing we have to do is raise the trim screws on the bridge. Now you want to make sure there's no tension on them 
So you don't want to adjust them while you have strings on the guitar, and I'm actually going to loosen the springs as well so that there's zero tension on them. Just grab the spring, push it forward, and it will come right off the claw. And they are well set into the bridge. So you can just let them hang out here for a moment and we will come back to attach them again later. Now, since we have raised the neck angle two thirty seconds, we need to raise the trem screws two thirty seconds. That should put us set up really close to in spec. Two thirty seconds also equals one full rotation of the Gen 3 screws. So if you want to mark each of them or put a piece of tape down so you can mark where each blade is, you're more than welcome to. And then rotate counterclockwise one full rotation. I just look at where the blade starts and count as the blades go by. And once I hit four, I know I've gotten a full rotation. Once you've done that, there's a small flat spot right on the side of the each screw head. If you look down the side, you want them to all line up level and even with each other. So after you do a full rotation, you're still gonna have to go in there and play with the individual heights and make sure that they are even and flat. Once you've flipped it over and you're sure that your cardstock is in place, you can take each spring, stretch it, and clip it to the trim claw. Our next step will be restringing the guitar with the PRS 10 to 46 gauge strings. Now that we've got the guitar strung up and tuned to pitch, let's take a look at our bridge. Ideally, we would like the bass plate and the strings to be sitting parallel to each other. And right now, it looks like we are canted back a bit. In order to level that out, we're going to have to loosen the claw screws to achieve the balance that we need with the springs. We're going to adjust the screws in a counterclockwise motion, and you want them to be about even, so make sure you adjust them evenly. We'll start off with two or three turns and see where we are from there. A good way to know when you're close is as you're adjusting this, you will see the cardstock that we put under the bridge fall out. Just like that. It may take several adjustments of the trem claw and retuning, but this is what you would like to end up with. You can see that the bridge plate is parallel to the strings and we have down trim and up trim. The next section of the setup is to set your string height. This is one of the places where the Silver Sky differs from a core setup. On the core setup we are 2 30 second to 2 and a half 30 second at the 12th fret. On the Silver Sky we are looking at just a hair over 230 seconds. Basically, you want to put the ruler against the string and just see the line underneath of it. And then you want to gradually step up until you are just over two and a half 30 seconds at the low E on the 12th fret. Next up is the intonation. To check that, we're going to play the unfretted note, make sure it's in tune, and then we will play the fretted 12th fret note. You should play it with about the pressure you would normally use when playing guitar, and check. Mine is slightly flat, so if the fretted note is flat, you're going to move the saddle forward. If the fretted note is sharp, you will move the saddle back.
Retune your open string. And try it again. There we go. And that's all that's involved in taking your Silver Sky from the stock flush setup to a fully floating trim. I hope you enjoy it. This is Sketchy signing off.